Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's available to purchase now via the website linked in the description down below and it's something called Sky for Sim and it's effectively an iPad type add-on. Uh, here we are at the MM Simulations Bay Ruth scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's quite a nice little bit of German scenery. Um, as you guys can see here and keep an eye out on the channel for a video showing you guys a little bit more of that um, but we're in the just flight pa28 and i'm going to show you guys this new add-on hope you guys enjoy it make sure you hit like and subscribe down below if you do so and share your thoughts in the comments below so to get everything started what you're going to want to do first is go to skyforsim.com and uh, that website address is going to be down in the description below so just click there nice and easy so here's the website for you and uh, of course you can go ahead and scroll all the way through and give it a good old read um, check out some of the teasers and follow some of the steps required to get everything installed if you want to go ahead and purchase it you can go products and uh, you'll see at the currently there's a launch offer on of course if you're watching this in the future that may or may not still be present um, but you can go ahead and buy it now via their own website here and in the near future they're hoping to get it on sim market too for those of you who like to use that website and as you can see here it says with sky for sim pad you will never alt tab anymore during your flights pretty cool provides maps flight plan creator real weather information all airport nav databases and a PDF reader inside the game. To get it all installed, what I would probably go to is help, tutorials, and the first thing you're going to want to do is install Net5 Framework. Click that and it'll give you some instructions. As you can see here, it pretty much shows you exactly what you need to do. So you go to the Microsoft SDK website, scroll down, and you want to select this one. And uh, depending on what architecture you need, you take your pick there and for me it's download x64 so you go ahead download that installed net 5.0 runtime and that's that first step complete then you can see down the bottom here it the next bit says get your api keys ready and we're going to have a look at that in a second effectively what you're going to want to do is go to bingmapsportal.com and sign in using your microsoft account and you can see here you want to then go through to keys and like unrealweather.blogspot.com, the Unreal Weather add-on of course, you may also want to get metals fed into this new program, in which case you'll need to create a token on avwx.rest. If you're new to the website, just hit pricing and you want to create uh, the hobby account, which gives you 4,000 um, calls a day for data, which is of course more than enough. And just go ahead and set an account up and you want to go and create some tokens within here. Just one token for this. If you want to use unrealweather.blogspot.com, you can use a second token if you wish. Um, but you can work way through that website and the Bing Maps website. Go to wherever you've got this installed, and uh, you can see here it's just within my D Drive FS add-ons. Sky for Sim. You can create a shortcut here to the program if you want to. But I've literally just installed it to take a little look, uh, and then you want to open that, boot the Sim, start server, and you'll see now in the right-hand side we're getting the tablet starting to appear inside the sim via the UI drop-down. What's, uh, what's worth noting at the moment is um, you can go through the actual main program me menu and you can add PDF files to this as well. When you open a managed documents folder you can add a whole load of stuff uh, to that if you wish. And You can also open the pad in a web browser. There you go, you can see here we've got a whole load of stuff API keys tutorial, release candidate, YouTube channels live, hit continue and uh, it's starting to build it in place already. This is also working for VR by the way. We need to do some configuration and there you go, it's going to ask for your API keys. So both Bing and AVWX if you've got those then of course now is the time to put those in. Don't share them with anybody. Hit next once you've added those in and it says now you need to import sim data. It's going to grab all your airports, runway, nav aids. It can take quite a few minutes. So let's hit that. So here we are at the Pyre Rig Devco's Edinburgh Airport scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And we've got the sky for sim pad active. Having loaded all the nav data, 
and added our API keys. You can see here in the aircraft we've added a really basic route from Glasgow across to Edinburgh as you can see there. Nice short sweet route just a straight line uh, and that's all there is. Uh, one or two aircraft or airports along the way as well. So we're keeping it simple. So inside the UI you can reshape it as you wish we hit continue and here we go with a type map thing looks really good actually has to be said uh, really nice actually and if I now click the filters button I now get satellite view again really good little feature so how do we go about actually planning for a flight well we can go through to the hamburger icon uh, it automatically loads in as the map um, but we can click airports and we can type in here for example G EF. Uh, what I would say is use the keypad here. Um, you can see, oddly enough, it's cut off some of the data at the bottom here. It's not what we want. Maybe it's my screen size that's causing it. Uh, but that obviously here, this setting here is my optimal for the screen size that I've actually got by the looks of it. Uh, of course, you can pop this window out if you want. But we'll leave it as it is here for now. Uh, EGPF, hit to enter, and there we go. Real weather, 998, rain. I've got it on just um, sort of clear skies, a few clouds at the moment, but you can see the real weather inside the sim and you can scroll down, view the different runway options, the radio frequencies and it gives a satellite image of the airport as well, which is really cool. Uh, so there you go, general tab gives you loads of data about the uh, airport itself, the airport elevation, magvar, the fuel types available, the different frequencies as well. Um, runways gives you the data for the runways so it tells you the heading for each uh, the length and the width the altitudes at the threshold the surface of them types of pappies and the pitch of the pappies as well useful information for approaches gives you lots of different comms frequencies ILS data and the weather data here We're using the AVWX weather API key that we used earlier so it's actually feeding in the real live white metar as well at the moment and we can scroll down and view different cloud layers uh, visibility temperature and all that sort of stuff so really cool and you can do the same for Edinburgh as well we click back onto hamburger um, you can view the weather by actually just looking at the weather tab within documents you can add ground charts and you can view them so I've already put these in um, directly in fact using sky for sim system so within this main program that you run outside of the sim you can click documents tab pdf files upload browse and uh, you can go ahead and find whichever you need really so we can just for example uh, look at manchester ground parking and taxi so we can double click that and it now loads into the um, program if you like sky for sim program setup it tells you when it's ready you hit continue then you can go back to your sim hit the refresh tab at the top here you can see it we've got the extra one added in ground and parking taxi you can also at the bottom here it says http link you can copy and paste a uh, website pdf url to a particular chart that you want you can name it something and hit download and it will download it and add it in for you which is quite clever um, but to select or view ones you've got here you can just simply double click and there you go so this is Manchester's grand chart and I'm just using the scroll wheel to zoom in but there's a plus or minus and there's left and right arrows as well so you can navigate along And find the relevant areas that you want within the charts uh, whichever they may be the PDF viewer also does any PDF effectively so it doesn't just have to be charts it could be whatever you find useful for your own sim experience if you've got like a crib sheet that you find really handy for when you're on that sim for example you can load that into here and you can view that too and you could always pop it up outside the way and use it as a second window if you've got two screens you can add this into your second screen uh, and the effect of this, the, the intention of the developer is to put everything that you need for a flight under one program, which is the whole idea behind this. Inside settings then you can change your e-binds, your shortcuts for things, your 
visual options for the map itself to add high contrast data. Update your nav data. You can just go into Sky for Sim and hit update nav data every ARAC cycle and it'll update that and change the PDF quality renders. Um, and then you've also got two tabs. You can change your API keys and you can reset all the settings too, which is quite cool. Back into map then and we've requested filters here or points of interest. Given a little while to load in because we are a little bit different here. Um, we've just loaded in somewhere entirely different. You can add ILS airports, um, things like that. So you can filter airports depending on whether they have ILS frequencies, ILS approaches or not. Um, but effectively everything with a yellow dot is an airport and it will, if you hover over it as you can see here it will give you the three letter code or the four letter ICAO code, gives you the airport elevation, the runways available and if they've got a frequency, it gives you that too, like you can see there. And of course, we're headed off to Edinburgh. We can draw a line, we can double click and draw the line there. And there's our planned route look, which is quite cool. We'll have a look at the flight plan shortly. That is telling us 36 nautical miles on a heading of 264 degrees. If we hover over Glasgow, we can see that we've got the GLW NDB, frequency 331 range of 38 nautical miles we can zoom in here because we've also got a VOR if we hop over that we can see we've got Golf Oscar Whiskey VOR 115.4 range of 195 nautical miles and then we've got the airport tab we can click there EGPF tower frequency ATIS altitude and different runway options you can double click and it will go into it and it will tell you weather data and everything else very smart there's our little plan line. We can click hamburger, flight plan, and there you go. We can change our target speeds. Um, we can add extra legs if we wish as well. So we've set EGPF as our departure. Inside the flight plan, we've reset that. We can just go to the map and double click on a few different things. If we scroll out, we should see some points of interest perhaps. Uh, there, there aren't any at the moment. There they are. So we've recycled the map filter there and you can see we've got the Kelpies, Stirling Castle, the National Wallace Museum, Fourth Rail Bridge, Edinburgh Castle and all that sort of stuff. So we can zoom out and see that all of these different um, picture icons are loads of different points of interest. There's loads here, wow. All around Fort William. You can go and explore, you can add them into your flight plan if you wish too. So if I wanted to go Glasgow to Edinburgh, but actually in fact deviate from my world map route I can double click on, on Glasgow I can double click on Stirling Castle and then I can go and find Edinburgh double click on the fourth rail bridge then double click on Edinburgh zoom into Edinburgh airport and I can just double click on that there we go happy days there's a little um, dynamic route with a couple of legs we've just thrown in, including some of the points of interest. We can go back to the hamburger icon, view the flight plan, and there you go. You can see that the duration is going to be around 25 minutes long at 110 knots, departing EGPF. We've got a stopwatch so we can start the timer, pause the timer, reset the timer, and we can complete headings as we go. We can fly along. And uh, we can view this if we want, whether it be on the single screen or the top screen. We can minimise it as we fly about. Fly a particular heading for a certain amount of time. Check it again. Duration of 12.52. Ah, we're over the National Wallace Monument. Perfect. Turn heading 117 degrees. Bury that into a track for wind. Fly for 10 minutes, Queen's Ferry Crossing. As we go onto that second leg, we can tick that first bit off like so. And then it, it blanks off the chart at the bottom. And we fly the next leg, we'll cross that out as well, so on and so forth. So if you've got quite a lot of legs in here, it's really handy because you can literally scribble them out as you go. Makes it really good for VFR. And similarly for IFR as well, you can use uh, little elements of this if you want to create like an Airways IFR type flight plan too. Or even a VOR to VOR route. 
really cool. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed the quick introduction to the new Sky for Sim add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. First off initially at Beirut, created by MM Simulations, and now of course ending at the really stunning Pyre Devco Glasgow scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you give the program a go, do share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to give the video a like. All the links for the scenery that you've seen today and the Sky for Sim pad add-on program will be in the description, so do check that out. Don't forget to subscribe as well and check out my live stream schedule. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.